Pay close attention to the title of this video. It's my second annual birthday thrift store crawl. Not my second birthday thrift store crawl. Because I'm not two years old. Well, not physically anyway. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, I'm coming at you with another haul video, as you saw by the title. And as you also saw suggested by the title, uh, I had a birthday recently, in the past uh, week-ish, and in what's apparently become something of a tradition here, I went on my second annual uh, birthday thrift store crawl. Yes, on or around my birthday uh, last year and again this year, I have gone around to the seven, yes, there used to be six, there are now seven St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores in the Eugene Springfield area. They have a great CD section, as I discovered a couple of years ago, never having set foot in a thrift store before. Uh, and their CDs are just 99 cents a piece, so there is no excuse to just go rummaging through the racks, picking out stuff that looks good, and bringing it home. Well, paying for it before you bring it home, of course. Uh, you gotta, don't forget to pay for it. Uh, so yes, and just to make things a little bit fun this time, uh, I, I think I, I showed you my haul last year, I think, uh, but since I turned 53 years old, do the math, this year, uh, I thought I would show you 53 of the CDs that I bought. And uh, yes, I actually bought about eight more than that, so I bought, uh, what was, what's that, about 61? I think I can still math at my age. Uh, Yes, I, I thought I would uh, break out 53 of them, line them up, and show them to you. Uh, now, I'm not being extra clever in this video. I'm not showing you one CD for each year that I've been alive. Uh, that's just way too much work for me. And Plus, I would probably buy and bring home stuff that I wouldn't care about, because it would be in a year that, you know, it's like buying stuff according to the year is kind of pointless unless you're at uh, after a certain objective. Anyway... So yes, 53 CDs. I thought I would show you what I got and have fun with this. And uh, uh, yes, I had, a, I had a good birthday, as you will see here. These first four CDs are from a label that I think I've mentioned recently, Rounder Records. I've become fond of a fair, bit, fair amount of the stuff they've put out. And I think I also mentioned that uh, I intend to, uh, starting in 2024, doing a mini-series, what I call Label Spotlight. That's my tentative title for it anyway just uh, talking about certain record labels that I uh, happen to have uh, developed a fondness for and just talk about some of the releases on them, and Rounder is one of those labels. And I just picked a, a few things that uh, looked pretty good. Uh, we have Wiley and the Wild West, and the title of this is Way Out West. Apparently this guy blends country with, uh, let's see, the cowboy sound of the 40s, the rockabilly, rockabilly of the 50s, and the California hard country sound of the 60s. So it sounded pretty interesting, and thought I'd give it a try. And I have listened to none of these, by the way, yet. I just brought them home yesterday. And uh, But this artist, uh, a lot of us have heard of. Alison Krauss, this is a collection of hers. Um, now that I've found you, a collection. So I thought I'd give her a try. Uh, she put out, an, put out an album with Robert Plant several years ago that was pretty good. And so I thought I would explore her stuff, her solo stuff. This one looks like a, it appears to be a blues combo or a, a, a band that would commonly back other more, uh, more popular blues artists. Uh, they call themselves Big Shoulders, and that looked really interesting, so kind of a bluesy stuff. And as you can kind of gather, Rounder Records, or at least their, their uh, associated labels, tend to operate in the country Americana blues, that uh, uh, neighborhood of stuff. Uh, this one I don't know anything about. He just it just looked interesting. I kind of like the cover art too. His name is Ellis Paul, and uh, a Carnival of Voices is the name of the album. So yeah, kind of a a, a derelict amusement park uh, in the background. A Ferris wheel here, kind of a an abandoned old Ferris wheeler. Ferris wheeler, <laughs> no, Ferris wheel. So yeah, kind of looked interesting by the cover art. And sometimes, yes, I occasionally will buy something because the cover art looks interesting. It gives me a certain vibe, like maybe I'll enjoy it. This next one, I've become fond of this artist um, recently, and this is one of the few albums I'm missing, I think. 
I might be missing more than this, but uh, yes, Miranda Lambert. Uh, this is her, her two-disc album, The Weight of These Wings. Yes, it was in the 99 cent section at one of the thrift stores. So if I thought, sure, go ahead and buy it. And uh, yes, I, I've like I've enjoyed uh, Miranda Lambert's most recent album and a couple of uh, a couple of her other albums I've become fond of. So, and then we have the Greatest Hits uh, collection by Melissa Manchester. This of course has uh, Don't Cry Out Loud. Uh, you should hear how she talks about you. That's a great rock rocking kind of song. Uh, and let's see, she does a cover of My Boyfriend's Back, the uh, pop song from the uh, Motown era. And uh, Midnight Blue, Just Too Many People. So, very, very good hits collection of hers. Now, this one I already have on LP, and I actually think this was a record that uh, Noah gifted me. Uh, Physical by Olivia Newton-John. So, I thought, you know, some albums I I like records, but I also like CDs. I, I like them almost equally. I, I think I love CDs a little bit more. And sometimes, even if I already have something on record... I'll buy it on CD because do I want to keep the record or do I, do I want to keep the CD or do I want to keep both? I don't know. And with this one, I'm not sure if I will keep this, the record or not. The, the cover was not in very great shape. Not that I really care. But, uh, you know, it, it's with records, it's much more the condition of the record that uh, uh, is important to me. Now, this one, it's another one that, and you're going to probably like I do, uh, or like I did when I saw them in the stores, uh, look at some of these and say, wow, you got that for 99 cents at a thrift store? Uh, Night Ranger, with their album... Uh, sorry. Midnight Madness. Midnight Madness. Uh, yes, it's got their, their hit um, uh, Sister Christian, their hit ballad, as well as a great song of theirs, You Can Still Rock in America. Uh, good stuff. Not a huge fan of the hard rock or metal genres, but... Uh, that's, that's one of those classics from the 80s, you know. Then we have Mike and the Mechanics with their sophomore album, or it might be their third album, uh, which is called Living Years. The title track was a very, very popular song on the radio, and you'll probably, on the, you know, nostalgia, nostalgia stations, like on the 80s format radio, you'll probably hear this song every once in a while. Uh, great, great ballad, which I did not realize was by Mike and the Mechanics. I always assume, assumed it was like a... Uh, Oh, what's his name? Uh, from the Eagles, Don Henley. No, I don't. I no, I wouldn't have thought it was a Don Henley song because I Don Henley has a distinctive voice. So anyway, I I thought it was by somebody else. That that's what I was trying to get at. Then we have a. I think this was from the '90s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, 1992. Uh, Charles and Eddie with their album Duophonic. I'm having brain farts with the title of these albums. But yes, uh, Charles and Eddie were uh, uh, very popular for the song Would I Lie to You. Now, that's a different song than the Eurythmic song. Would I Lie to You is kind of... Uh, Charles and Eddie's version of Would I Lie to You is a ballad with a bit of a reggae kind of a uh, sound to it. Very, very good song. And that's the only song of theirs that I know. So I thought uh, give a shot at the rest of... at a full album of theirs, see if there's any other great songs that I'm missing. And then I've got a couple of two-disc titles here. Uh, Diana, Diana Ross and the Supremes, an anthology. Yeah. And all these discs were in excellent condition. So yes, a two-disc anthology of Diana Ross and the Supremes for 99 cents. Heck yeah. And this next artist, I'm not very much into her. In fact, I don't really know any of her songs. But again, this is actually a CD and DVD combo. Why not pick it up and give it a try? Selena. Her greatest hits. Yes, one disc of her the songs and another disc of the music videos. So uh, yeah, I pretty much struck gold on this uh, this thrift store haul. Now this next one I had a long time ago, uh, got rid of it because it just wasn't interesting to me at the time. But I saw it and thought I'd pick it up again. Uh, In my life by George Martin, and it's basically um, Beatles songs and other stuff that he's produced. Uh, covered by different by other artists. Uh, see, we've got um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, an interesting combo here on track one. Robin Williams, the comedian, the late comedian, and Bobby McFerrin sing "Come Together." Interesting, but it, but it works. Uh, Goldie Hawn, the uh, actress, sings "A Hard Day's Night." You've got Jeff Beck, Celine Dion, 
Jim Carrey, yes, the actor Jim Carrey sings I Am the Walrus, which kind of an appropriate choice. It's one of their one of the Beatles' very weird songs, so who else would do it but uh, Jim Carrey? And then John Williams, not the um, film score composer, but the classical guitarist, does Here Comes the Sun. And then, uh, yes, several other things on here. Uh, oh, Phil Collins does a uh, medley of Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight, and The End. And Sean Connery. Sean Connery does the closing track, In My Life. Not sure if it's a spoken word or... I don't know, I'm almost afraid to hear Sean Connery try to sing. I don't know, maybe he has a great voice, I don't know. But anyway, yes, a very interesting set. As you can see, uh, you can probably, you can maybe tell why I was compelled to pick it up again after many years of not having had it. Then here we have um, kind of something else tying into movies, because there were some movie stars on that other one. Uh, this is an album by Neil Diamond called Heartlight. The, tr the title track, Heartlight, was uh, inspired by the movie E.T. Uh, this album was put out in 1982. Uh, so yeah, and, and I'm not sure how much of the rest of the album might have been inspired by it, but um, a couple of the tracks on here, Lost Among the Stars is the name of the, one of the songs, and uh, Star Flight is the name of another song. So it kind of makes me wonder, was more than just that one song inspired by E.T.? I don't know. And the title track, Heartlight, was the only song that I've ever heard off of that album that I know of. So, again, for 99 cents each, pick it up and give it a try. What have you got to lose? Except 99 cents. Now, this one, I almost passed this over. I, When I go to the stores, a lot of times I will, you know, go over the racks once and then go over them a little bit faster the second time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I caught this on the second go-over, so I'm glad I didn't miss it. Isley meets Backrack. Yes, uh, Ronald Isley sings Songs of Burt Backrack. So I, I know I'm going to love this album. Uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, uh, A House Is Not a Home, The Look of Love, uh, This Guy's In Love With You, Close to You, Anyone Who Had a Heart. I mean, yeah, it, it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be a winner. This might be the one that I like most out of all these. I don't know. Uh, then we have a classic star from the 30s and 40s, and I think he actually, his days in entertainment went back to vaudeville before that. Jimmy Durante. Uh, yes, this is an album of his uh, songs. He was a singer. He wasn't a fantastic singer. But uh, back then, your voice didn't need to be crystal clear and absolutely perfect. Uh, your personality was as much of a thing as uh, your talent, especially if you were famous for being in in other areas of entertainment, like vaudeville. You know, vaudeville was a little bit of song, a little bit of dance, a little bit of jokes, a little bit of everything. So, and no, I wasn't alive for the vaudeville era. Anyway, uh, this next one is a little bit later than the uh, Jimmy Durante era, era. Burl Ives, I thought I'd pick him up. He's, of course, most famous for uh, the Christmas songs that he's performed, and uh, at least one of which is on here, I think. Uh, or is it? No, maybe not. I don't think it is. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, but yeah, I thought I would give him a try. He's got, you know, f you know his voice from his, the Christmas songs that he does, so he's kind of got one of those unmistakable voices, kind of a warm, just a warm, nostalgic voice, I guess is what it is. So I, I had to pick up a, an album of his other stuff to see if he's as good at other stuff as he was at Christmas songs. And then I've got a compilation of this person but I wanted to pick up one that was a little more expansive. Ella Fitzgerald, Pure Ella. I've only got like an 11 or 12 song thing, and this has got 18 songs. Some overlap, but not a whole lot, so I think I will actually keep the other one in addition to this one. Now this one, actually, yes, I am I stand corrected from the uh, Ronald, Ronald Isley Burt Backrack album. I think this is the one that I'm looking most forward to listening to. Uh, it's an album called Tonin, and it's by the Manhattan Transfer, the vocal jazz group. I did not know this one existed. I've had a couple of other Manhattan Transfer albums. I think I've got a best of, and they're good. I like their hits. I don't love them, but uh, they're not bad at all. But this album has uh, a bunch of featured artists, uh, you know, singing with the Manhattan Transfer. Frankie Valli, uh, Felix Cavalier from the Lung, Lung Rascals, Young Rascals. 
uh, Bette Midler, Smokey Robinson, Laura Nero, Phil Collins, uh, Ruth Brown, and B.B. King are on one track. Uh, the Thrill is Gone, a classic blues song. So I cannot wait to listen to this album. This is just going to be great. Uh, if you want to pause and look at the rest of the track listing, I will try to hold, hold it steady there. But yes, a fantastic looking array of guest artists on here. I am really looking forward to listening to that. And then uh, this one, I've got several of this guy's albums. I think this was the album that preceded Give Me the Night. This is George Benson's album, Living Inside Your Love. And it apparently was a double-length album, because it says here, yeah, two, uh, a two-record set on one specially priced compact disc. And uh, let's see, this one has A Change Is Gonna Come, which I assume is the, uh, the uh, folk standard. Uh, Love Is A Hurtin' Thing, that's a Lou Rawls song that he made famous. Uh, Unchained Melody. So yes, uh, that one's going to be fun to listen to. And uh, then we have one uh, another artist I've got several albums by, Bobby McFerrin. This is his self-titled debut. Uh, yes, I've got three or four of his other albums, his subsequent albums, but I had never picked up his debut album, so that's going to be fun. And then uh, our artist, hopefully I will pronounce her name right, I've got... Do I still have a best of? I cannot remember if I've got that one or if I got rid of it. Nana Muskuri, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is an album where she covers uh, songs that were made famous in movies. And actually, um, Harry Belafonte duets with her on a couple of the songs here. And so, yeah, she does Over the Rainbow, uh, The Wind Beneath My Wings, the, uh, the Bette Midler song. Uh, Laura. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, she does a duet with that with uh, that one with Harry Belafonte. Uh, the Windmills of Your Mind, Smile, the Charlie Chaplin song. Uh, the Way We Were, which was the uh, Streisand song. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And then we have I, uh, this next one. I'm not sure about these guys. Uh, I don't know what genre this is, uh, but they call themselves the Tough Young Tenors. So I, I'm kind of assuming, and it looks like one of them is holding a saxophone, and another one is holding perhaps another instrument. So I don't know if these guys are a instrumental combo, or if some or all of them are singers as well. And I also don't know what uh, what genre it is either. So I'm kind of assuming that it's jazz, but we'll find out. It just looked really intriguing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, oh, Blues on the Corner is the name of one of the songs, so I'm kind of assuming it's kind of a jazz blues uh, hybrid. But, uh, yeah. There's an uh, act that I've got. Uh, they are a vocal act. Kind of one of those pop or crossover acts. They call themselves Three Mo Tenors. And they are, uh, they're they're all three African-American. And they that album is just great. I, I think it's self-titled. I can't remember. But, yeah, they sing a variety of uh, opera songs and uh, Great American Songbook stuff. And they even do uh, one or two novelty songs, I think. I'll have to pull that CD out again and, and talk about it on a video. It was really good. And anyway, that's just just because they had tenors in their name. That's why I went off on that tangent. Tangent. Anyway, these guys you saw recently in a bargain bag video, and so I saw their sophomore album. Yeah, their debut one was the one that was in the bargain bag. The Braxton Brothers. I got this is their sophomore album, Now and Forever. I like their debut so much that uh, I was very happy to see that one. And then here are a couple of classic piano uh, pianists' greatest hits. We've got Liberace, greatest hits. And I do have a uh, an icon volume of Liberace. Uh, a little overlap, not a whole lot. So this, again, kind of like the Ella Fitzgerald. I may go ahead and keep this one as well as the icon set. And then we also have Peter Nero's greatest hits. Uh, he is one of those uh, easy listening piano guys. Now, this next artist, I've got two albums by this next artist. He is one of those New Age artists. Now, I was way into New Age back in the late 80s, early 90s. And this guy was, is one of the bigger New Age stars, but I never tried any of his music. And these are his two most well-known albums uh, by uh, Ray Lynch is the guy's name. This is Deep Breakfast. And I also write side by side by that one, found No Blue Thing. The titles of the albums are very strange, as kind of was the case with... Uh, it was not unusual for New Age artists back then to have kind of oddball uh, album titles uh, or, tr or track names. Uh, but anyway, I thought I would finally, after all these years, and after my 
biggest uh, New Age craze days way behind me, finally give Ray Lynch a try. Uh, these guys are a contemporary jazz or smooth jazz group. I've got a few of their albums. Uh, the Yellow Jackets, this is actually their 25th anniversary uh, CD set. They have, they've got, this is a a CD and a DVD. So I, I, th I think one of them, or perhaps both of them, are live recordings. So this will be interesting to do. Yeah, the Rippingtons, which is another group that I'm uh, real fond of, they kind of did uh, a similar thing. The CD was uh, studio cuts, I think. I think? Yeah. And the DVD was a live presentation. So good stuff. Now this one, I didn't even know this existed until I saw it at the same, uh, on the racks at St. Vinny's. This is uh, Otmar Liebert with his album Nouveau Flamenco. And as you can see here, it is the 10th anniversary edition. I didn't know this existed. I really enjoy the album. I've got the original issue, the original uh, uh, version of it. And this has, what, like six or eight uh, bonus tracks, uh, previously unreleased songs. So, uh, yes, I was very happy to uh, pick this one up and uh, upgrade from the original version. So, yeah. And then we have, uh, here's another artist that uh, I've got, I think I've got a greatest hits of his, but it's from another label, and I never knew that he recorded on the Columbia label before, uh, Chuck Mangione, or is it Mangione? I'm not sure. But yes, this is a collection of his Columbia uh, uh, hits, and yes, a I believe A&M was the other uh, art um, label that I have a hits collection from, so yeah. His bigger hits were on the A&M label, but... I like that stuff enough that pick up the uh, the Columbia his Columbia years and see what I'm missing. And now here is uh, another new age artist. I kind of had these slightly out of order, I'm trying to keep them within within genre as I go through, you know. But uh, yeah, occasionally out of order. Uh, David Arkenstone. Now this guy was an artist that I kind of paid attention to. Uh, I kind of was spotty on getting his albums back in my New Age phase. Uh, this is one that I never owned before, though, uh, Citizen of the World. This is like his sixth or seventh album, and it's on the Wyndham Hill label. So looking forward to uh, checking that one out. As the title suggests, I am assuming that it's going to have several different world music influences in with it, which uh, I, I certainly don't mind at all. Excuse me for one second and take a drink. We're a little more than halfway through here, so. Plus, we are switching genres, so I figured that was a decent time to take a drink. I got a handful of holiday albums. Uh, one of these, this was released just last year, and there it was at St. Vinny's for a dollar, uh, a Holly Dolly Christmas, Dolly Parton. It's like, why not? A practically new CD, a uh, holiday CD for one dollar. Uh, I would be a fool not to pick it up. And then we have Lou Rawls' Christmas. I'm not sure if this is a compilation, <coughs> excuse me, or an actual album that he put out, but yeah, Lou Rawls has an amazing voice. I've got a two-disc essential uh, greatest hits collection of his. Wonderful voice. And speaking of wonderful voices, Linda Ronstadt, uh, a, a Merry Little Christmas is what it's called. And then, yes, I'm, I'm assuming this is a... Uh, an actual album, not a compilation. And then we're stepping a little bit back in time here for this holiday album. Mitch Miller, uh, Holiday Sing Along with Mitch. Uh, I don't think I've ever listened to Mitch Miller before, so it'll be kind of fun to uh, put this one on. And then uh, I believe I just mentioned this guy in... Oh, I think this was in my um, the radio station media sale hall from last month. Uh, I just got a couple of this guy's albums, and... His holiday album was there at St. Vinny's. Peter White. So now I have a covers album of his and and one other one, I think. And this holiday album. So, yeah. And now we are moving into the uh, the show tunes and soundtracks category. This will be the next one. And although this is kind of a, a compilation, but it's a compilation of the songs that she did for movies. Judy Garland uh, in Hollywood, her greatest movie hits. So yes, I, I do have another Judy Garland compilation. I'm not sure how much overlap there is between this one and that one, so I don't know if I will keep that one or not. But uh, this has, I mean, she was obviously most, fam <coughs> excuse me, most famous for her movie hits, although she did have, have a few hits beyond her movie career. So, And of course this has uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So. It would be stupid if it didn't have it, right? Then I've got a two-disc set. These were a little bit scratched up, but they should play just fine. And uh, 
I had, I think I told, I've told you this guys, I've told you guys this before. I've got a little side hustle where I uh, put LPs that people want transferred onto CD, onto CD. I've got the, my stereo, my stereo hooked up to my computer so I can do that. And one of them was a Disney album from the, must've been from the seventies, I think, or maybe it was the sixties. And so that kind of got the bug in my ear. Uh, I have to listen to the album since I have to transfer them in real time. You know, there's, you can't, do it at three, two times or five times or ten times speed. Uh, so listening to that album kind of, it was, it was fun. It was a lot more fun than I expected. So I got the Disney bug in my ear, and I found these at the thrift store. So uh, the Disney collection, volume one and volume two. So figured why not get them. And, you know, yes, they're a little scratched up, but for 99 cents each, why not? Uh, and, you know, if they don't play, they don't play, and I can always look look out for uh, better condition copies somewhere down the line. And uh, this one uh, is big, kind of the same thing. It's on the same subject, but this is uh, the Boston Pops conducted by Arthur Fiedler, does um, famous Disney, Disney songs. Uh, most of them are in the form, form of medleys from various movies and stuff, so I love the Boston Pops uh, when they were conducted by John Williams, So, but I don't think I've ever had any Arthur Fiedler, so which was John Williams' predecessor to the conductor's podium at the Boston Pops. So, And uh, now we're getting into the actual soundtracks. And, yes, these first four are from movies... Actually, most of these are movies I've never seen. So, yes, try not to hate me too much. And, yes, I am almost astonishingly cinematically illiterate when it comes to movies I haven't seen. Uh, Babe, the soundtrack by Nigel Westlake. No, I have never seen the movie. Get off my case. I'll get around to it, eventually. And I've also never seen The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. But uh, it's by Cliff Eidelman. And the I know Cliff Eidelman from his score for Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, which is one of my favorite Star Trek scores. And, I mean, talk about the uh, two extremes in types of movies that you would do. A Star Trek movie and Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. So I look forward to listening to this one and seeing how versatile Cliff Eidelman was. Or is. He's still alive. And then this is a movie I still have not seen, but I really want to see. Hollywoodland. Uh, this is about um, George Reeves, the death of George Reeves. It's a dramatization of uh, the events surrounding it. Uh, George Reeves played Superman in the 1950s TV series, and he died under somewhat uh, dubious circumstances. It was ruled a suicide, but they're not totally sure it was. That's what that movie is about. But, um, yes, uh, Marcelo Zarvos did this, the music for that movie. And then this is another movie I have not seen. The Matrix. I know. I haven't seen it. Uh, Don Davis is uh, the guy who did the music for The Matrix. I know. There, there are movies I... Some movies that you would not believe I have not seen. Uh, then we have uh, The Lord of the Rings, uh, the the first movie, Fellowship of the Ring. Yes, they had this soundtrack there. They also had uh, The Two Towers, I think it was, and it was still sealed, but I decided just to get this one because uh, I'm not a huge fan of The Lord of the Rings. I, I finally made it through the first movie after falling asleep through uh, in the middle of it two times or three times I finally made it through. So it's all right. Not, to not a huge Tolkien or... Lord of the Rings fan. So, uh, and this I've actually never seen this this movie either. Fame. This is uh, the soundtrack, obviously from the the song soundtrack from the movie. Uh, the the title song by Irene Cara is great. I did have a single for a long, long time. I think I still have it with the title song Fame and the song Never Alone, also on the soundtrack, was the B side. So, so cool. Uh, this movie I have seen, and this is the last of the soundtracks section. Uh, Respect, the Aretha Franklin biopic. Uh, this is the uh, songs by uh, Jennifer Hudson. My my brain is just not uh, sticking with it for some reason today. But yes, uh, Jennifer Hudson did a fantastic job portraying uh, Aretha Franklin and singing her songs. Just um, an amazing movie. And now I, I also got a few live albums. Yes, three live albums and two... Um, Comedy albums are what's... Oh, no, there is there will be something after these last five CDs in my house, so stick around. Uh, Carmen McRae, live. 
or actually Alive is the name of the album, uh, a singer of uh, jazz standards and uh, Great American Songbook standards. Uh, it's a live album of hers. She, I like her stuff, uh, her studio stuff, so I thought I would check out a live album. And I am a fan of these guys as well, uh, but did not have this live album yet. Stevie Ray Vaughan on Double Trouble. Live Alive. Uh, should be great. And this one kind of surprised me that I found some uh, this at the thrift store. A live album by the Tra Tragically Hip. Another band I've just recently gotten into. This is uh, Live Between Us. So yeah, I did pretty well on scoring the live albums. And then I've got a couple of... Uh, well, this one is song comedy. This is Ray Stevens, his 20 comedy hits. Now, I do have a, a greatest hits collection of his from Rhino Records, but I did not recognize a lot of the songs on this compilation, so I don't think there's a whole lot of, of uh, overlap, so I might end up keeping this one as well. So, uh, yes, uh, the All-American Two-Week Summer Family Vacation. That could be an interesting one. And then a Teenage Mutant Kung Fu Chickens. That's another song on here. If you don't believe me, there's the title, the uh, track listing there. So, yeah. Should be interesting. And then an actual, I believe this is a stand-up comedy CD, Gilda Radner, the late Gilda Radner from Saturday Night Live. Uh, looks like she reprises a couple of her um, her SNL characters on here. Uh, Emily Latella, Lisa Lupner, and Roseanne Rosanna Dana are featured on here. So that should be a lots of fun to listen to. And now I've got one other thing I wanted to show you. Excuse me while I set this down. <clears throat> Pardon me. One more drink real quick. Now this one requires a little bit of uh, introduction. Uh, there was a miniseries of 15 episodes. It was a documentary miniseries hosted by Peter Jennings, and it was... Uh, uh, made by the ABC News uh, staff and probably a couple other entities. It was called The Century, and it was it was done right around 1999, and so it basically was a chronological, historical account of the world as seen through the eyes of the United States. You know, it, it focused mostly on what was happening in the States, but it also touched on, obviously, since the U.S. was involved in of uh, several wars during the 20th century and stuff. It kind of talked about the world as well. But it was an excellent series, and I first became aware of it when I bought from a comic book store that was going out of business the VHS tape set. It was still sealed. I bought it for five bucks, and at the time I still had a VHS player, so I was able to watch it. Really enjoyed it. I watched it, watched it all the way through a couple of times. <clears throat> and I was able to digitize it onto my computer, uh, with the intention of turning it into DVDs, I still haven't done that yet. But anyway, I was at the, one of the thrift stores yesterday, and uh, I happened to find, and I never, I did, never knew that this was made, an audio version of it. So yes, this is The Century, uh, uh, narrated and hosted by Peter Jennings uh, in 15 CDs. Uh, yes, and it was, ba it's basically. Uh, in, you know, not an exact just audio transcription of the TV program, but, uh, you know, it's got some extra narration and obviously some sound clips that uh, were not in the TV version. But yes, a nice little write-up here on the back. But uh, yeah, a couple of the discs were in pretty scratched-up condition, uh, but I played the worst of them on my stereo and it played through okay. So well, the rest of them should play just fine. But yes, each chapter is its own CD in here. And each one is about an hour long, so it's about roughly 15 hours, give or take. And that is what the uh, the TV special or the audiovisual version of this miniseries was as well. Was the, Each episode was about an hour long. So yes, I am looking forward to listening to the rest of this. Uh, a great set. And it was only $6.99. Uh, and interestingly, the CD cases were in pretty good shape, but on about two-thirds of the CDs... The hubs in the trays, you know, the, the things with the little teeth that grab the CD and hold onto it, the hubs in two-thirds of the CDs were just all smashed out and all the teeth were gone out of them. The The cases weren't smashed, so I'd be very curious as to uh, how the person who owned this previously treated their CDs and stuff to uh, have that happen. But anyway, as you can see, the box is not in terribly great condition. Corners are busted and stuff and kind of smashed and 
bunch of scratches and stuff on it, but for $7, and obviously it's the discs that uh, matter to me, I thought that was a great, great find. So, uh, yes, I am very happy with uh, my birthday haul from St. Vinny's, and uh, maybe a year from now, I'm not going to wait a year, a year from now before I go to the thrift stores again. I like to go to them every couple of months because things are stuff is con constantly rotating through there so you, you never know what you're going to find there so uh but yes maybe next birthday haul will be uh, even better and and next year i'll show you 54 cds well, but probably not any box sets also anyway that'll do it for this video be sure to like it if you like it and before you go drop me some feedback in the comment section i'd love to know what you think don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon to catch my new videos and click my username to browse my old videos Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.